More than 500 years ago, Christopher Columbus, the legendary explorer, set out on a voyage funded by European royalty to find a western route to India. He didn't make it to India, but he ended up discovering the Americas in 1492. The first person in the world to make it to these shores. Or was he? You see, there are several theories and pieces of evidence like this ancient Chinese map, these Chinese anchors off the coast of California, or these ancient Chinese carvings in New Mexico that point to the Chinese having come to America before Columbus. They just for some reason decided they didn't like it here and didn't stick around. In this video, I want to give you four such theories. And remember, they are just theories. You can make up your own mind what you believe. And this video is brought to you by Puritung, but more on that later. Number one, Chinese explorer Zheng He. So Zheng He was a Chinese Muslim explorer who went on seven voyages to the West. He is regarded as one of the most glorious figures in Chinese history by people today, primarily for the fact that he makes China look really good. He's basically China's Columbus. They even named a ship after him in Star Trek. Acting Captain Will Riker in command of the USS Zheng He. They kind of butchered the pronunciation. But anyway, he was a court eunuch under Emperor Yongle in the Ming Dynasty. He was tasked with sailing to the West to show off the Ming Dynasty's power and collect tributes to the emperor from so-called tribute states. So when you see old paintings, for example, of giraffe in China, that came as a tribute from the Sultan of Bengal on Zheng He's voyage. These expeditions were massive. Zheng He had over 60 ships up to 240 feet in length with six decks each and a total crew across the whole fleet of 28,000 men. Now typically people think Zheng He's voyages went something like this. He basically followed the coast of Asia west past India around the Arabian Peninsula to the east coast of Africa and then came back. He went seven times, going only as far as India the first few times, and then making three trips all the way to Africa. Well, that's all well and good, except for the fact that there is another map that appears to show Zheng He actually circumnavigated the world and mapped the entirety of North and South America with some level of accuracy. I mean, he had California floating in the sea off the west coast, but you know, maybe we're better off without them. Zheng He managed to predict Calexit before it even happened. Now, this map is supposed supposedly an 18th century copy of a 1418 map that would, if real, show that Zheng He discovered America 70 years before Columbus. Only problem is the origin of this map is really not that clear. It was supposedly discovered by a Beijing-based lawyer who bought it from a secondhand bookstore for about 500 US dollars. I mean, that doesn't even make sense. Who spends $500 in a secondhand bookstore? But according to the Daily Mail, Mr. Liu had the map authenticated by an appraiser from Christie's Auctions, who said that the document was very old and was not a newly made fake. It then attracted the attention of British historian Gavin Menzies, who did his own research on the map and says that the fact the map shows some of the same names for towns in Peru that were being used in the early 1400s shows its authenticity. Menzies used this argument in his book, who discovered America to claim that Zheng He made it all the way to the Americas on his voyages. Now, personally with this one, I don't think this map proves anything whatsoever. For starters, it's supposedly an 18th century copy anyway. Maybe they updated it with new knowledge. And if Zheng He did reach America, it would be a glorious achievement in China's semi-recent history. Wouldn't there be some other record of it in Chinese historical writings? So for me, this is the least likely of the four theories that we're going to look at. All right, let's move on to the next one. Number two, Chinese characters carved in New Mexico. Now, before getting into the fascinating ancient Chinese characters found calves on rocks in New Mexico, I want to talk about the sponsor of today's video, Puritan. Of any supplement that you could include in your diet, omega-3 is the best all-round defender of your health. It can reduce cholesterol, reduce the risk of heart problems, reduce aging, and even improve your eyesight. Now, most omega-3 supplements come from fish oil, but not Puritunks. Their omega-3 oils are extracted from purslane and perilla seeds from plants growing in the high mountains of Korea. So it is organic, 100% vegan, has no fishy aftertaste, and 
almond has a much higher omega-3, 6, 7, and 9 concentration than fish oil. Pure Tang also uses a patented supercritical carbon dioxide low temperature extraction method to extract the oils, which preserves the natural properties better. So get Pure Tang Omega-3 for yourself or a loved one this holiday season and enter my code BH2023 at checkout to get free shipping on your order. Link is below. So if Zhenghe didn't discover America coming from the east, maybe Chinese explorers came across the Pacific to the west coast. Is there any evidence of that? Well, there appear to be ancient Chinese characters carved on the rocks in New Mexico. This was discovered and researched by John Ruskamp. This rock near Albuquerque, New Mexico appears to show a very old version of Chinese characters that mixes both seal and bronze era scripts, which were common during the Shang dynasty that existed from around 1600 BC to 1046 BC. This is a date of a man bowing down to the emperor making a sacrifice of a dog in an official sacrifice. That's what this tripart symbol is. And the chances of putting these all together in the right order is one one sextillion. Ruskamp writes that National Park Service personnel confirmed the characters had been there for over 150 years. And that is significant because the understanding of these scripts, especially the Bronze Era script, was lost after the Shang Dynasty until the discovery of the oracle bones in Anyang, China in 1899. An American over 150 years ago would simply have no knowledge of these characters. Neither would a Chinese immigrant before 1899, which points to the idea that they were carved by a Chinese person during the Shang Dynasty when the script was in use. But how did they get to America? Well, there is the theory of a land bridge during the Ice Age when sea levels were lower and people could just walk across from Northeast Asia to what is modern day Alaska. But the last Ice Age ended 11,500 years ago, so that relates to much earlier settlers. The DNA of Native Americans is believed to be related to Asians, and this is an explanation for their arrival in the US. But that would be many thousands of years before Chinese culture, which has a history of about 5,000 years. So the other possible explanation is that they came by boat. The American way, right? You know about that. Fresh off the boat. Just like Zhenghe did following the coastline west, if you follow the coast of Asia east, it takes you past Japan and Russia to the Bering Sea, where the eastern tip of Russia is actually really close to Alaska. You can actually see Russia from land here in Alaska. You can then follow the coast down to California. Evidently, they came by sea. They likely came in just north of Los Angeles on the Santa Clara River. We picked them up at Barstow, California in a great number of writings here. From similar carvings in California, Arizona, and New Mexico, it looks like they basically followed Route 66, like a group of excited Asian tourists, until they reached Albuquerque, New Mexico, and then left their mark to honor the Shang Dynasty King on a rock there. But it doesn't look like they set up a civilization here. There are other similar carvings scattered around, which Ruskamp believes are copies made by Native Americans. So perhaps it was just a small expeditionary group and when they got here, after what would have been an epic voyage, they made contact with the Native Americans before heading back. Or even if they stayed, they simply got absorbed into the Native American communities already here. Now, if you think it's unlikely that this voyage happened, take a look at our next piece of evidence. Number three, Chinese anchors off the coast of California. In 1973, a US Navy survey ship was dredging the seabed off of California on the far side of Catalina Island, you know, the place on that Apple desktop photo, and came up with a donut-shaped stone object. This object was studied by Dr. C.C. C. Wu of the US Geological Survey, and according to the manganese coating, which was three millimeters thick and builds up on objects submerged in seawater at a rate of one millimeter every thousand years, it put the age of the object at approximately 3,000 years. Or put simply, it was lost to the sea at around 1,000 years BC, around the time of the style of script that was found on the rock 
in Albuquerque. And this area of the seabed is full of such objects. The objects were then studied by Dr. James R. Moriarty of the University of San Diego, and yes, confusingly, the name is very similar to Jim Moriarty, the fictional enemy of Sherlock Holmes. But anyway, Moriarty and his student, Larry Pearson, analyzed the objects, and they found that they resembled stone rollers used for milling, road building, and anchor components in ancient China. So their research supports the claim that the Chinese sailed to the west coast of North America as far back as the Shang Dynasty and were able to write the inscription on the rock in New Mexico. But wait, there's more. Moriarty's research was cited by another Chinese academic, Feng Zhongpu, to back up what may be the first written account of a Chinese person reaching North America. And guess what? It was a thousand years before Columbus. Number four, the Buddhist monk Hui Shen. Now this story comes from the Book of Liang, or Liang Shu, completed in the year 635 AD. It tells of a Buddhist monk called Hui Shen who made a voyage to somewhere around the year 500 AD. He talks of a land called Fusang, and here's what it says about it in the book. Fusang is 20,000 li away from China located in the east. Its lands have many Fusang trees, and thus it was named as such. One li is about a third of a mile, so 20,000 li to the east would have taken Hui Shen to somewhere around Acapulco, Mexico. Now listen to the description of the trees. The leaves of the Fusang tree are like polonia. When it's young, it's like a bamboo shoot. The people of the country eat it. Its fruit is like a pear, but red. Its bark is used for cloth for clothes and also for silk and for wooden houses. They had no walled cities. They had a writing system and they used the Fusang bark for paper. Scholars believe that what Hui Shen is describing is the century plant or agave, which does have a trunk like a bamboo shoot. It has fruits that can be red in color and its fibers can be used for making rope and cloth. The plant grows throughout Mexico. Hui Shen supposedly left on his voyage in the year 451 AD and returned in 499. In that 48 year time frame, it is possible that he could have traveled that far. Another piece of supporting evidence is that the ocean current in the north of the Pacific, known as the Japanese current, runs east and would carry a ship from Asia to the coast of California. Then there is another current going the other way that starts from the coast of Central America that could have, in theory, carried Hui Shen's ship back home to tell the story. All right, guys, so that is the story of how the Chinese discovered America. Obviously, these are only theories, and you can decide how much of each one of them you believe. I personally think it's pretty funny that we make such a big deal out of Columbus. We even have a federal holiday to celebrate him, and the Chinese may have just nonchalantly beaten him to it without even realizing it was anything special. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to defend your health with Puritan's Omega-3 supplement. Link is below. And you can get free shipping on your order with my code BH2023. It's the perfect gift for a loved one this holiday season. Please subscribe to the channel if you're new. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.